So, so far we worked a little bit with the course design here with uh, the heading, the syllabus, the course description, the attendance, then posting various resources. Now we are going to get into uh, posting activities, assignments for the students, uh, things that they all do so that you can grade and assess their understanding of the subject. So we're going to click on uh, to add an assignment. We're going to click on add an activity. And there are two types of assignments at this point. The recent upgrade, this was uh, simplified to some extent, or quite a bit. And most of the functions for an assignment, traditional assignment, as we are used to, they are going to be under the assignment option here in the top. And now recently, we also integrated a Turnitin assignment, which is a tool for detecting plagiarism in assignments. The first option here, it does not check for plagiarism. The second, it does. So I'm going to cover them both here in our... So we're going to click on Assignment. And you notice there's a pretty lengthy description as to what it does and how it works. Then we're going to click on Add. So let's assume this is an assignment to, to write a five-page paper on business intelligence. And by the way, business intelligence, it's one of those hot topics nowadays in computer technology in uh, making decisions uh, by using collected data and having a computer analyze the data and uh, give you ideas as to what the best decision is to take in a business environment. So we'll have, let's say, five-page paper. So once we give it a name, then we need to post a description. The description is basically the guidelines and the requirements for this paper. I'd recommend that you specify how to save the paper, what file format, for example, first name, underscore, last name, and then the title of the paper. Then you specify here the dates when they can submit the paper and when the paper is due. Notice you can enable and disable those. It depends on how you want, but it's best that uh, if you're going to use the due dates and stick by them, it, they need to be accurate, especially if you're importing a course for previous semesters. The due date needs to be up to date. Uh, as the students get really frustrated when an assignment is not even due yet, and it says it's 450 some days uh, past due. Then always show description. You can leave that uh, available or alone. Uh, prevent late submissions. Leave that to no, because otherwise, if you you can prevent them, but yet, if you do prevent them, then the students will try to email you those late assignments. Require the students to click on submit, but uh, one less thing for students to do. Notify the graders about submissions. This is like if you want to receive emails from students that the paper has been submitted. And then notify graders about late submissions. In that way, you'll get an email when a student submits something late. The rest here, uh, submission settings, online text, by default, this is no. It's best to just have the students upload a file rather than typing stuff online because of timeout issues or disconnections or things of that nature. If you're going to use the online text option, make sure that you ask the students to save it first in their computer and then copy and paste it into online. Uh, file submissions, yes. Uh, that means that the students are going to submit it electronically. And then number of files, uh, usually it is one, however you might have uh, cases where you need more than one file uploaded and this is where you change it. Submission comments, um, basically this is um, if you want the students to submit any comments for you. So usually it is no. Feedback settings, you're going to provide feedback comments and then feedback files as well. And then under the grade, this is how you're going to grade this particular assignment. It's recommended that for longer assignments, you give them more points. And for uh, one page or so, let's say 20 points or 10 points, depending on how major the paper is. The grading method, it's going to be graded uh, using against these points. That's a simple way of doing it. You can have a marking guide or a rubric that at some point we'll get to talk more about it. The grade category, this is where that step that we discussed earlier on creating the categories in the grade book comes in helpful. So under the grade category, what it's saying is that this paper 
what category does this fall under as stated in the syllabus? So we created the categories earlier and now this would be for example under projects or if you had the thing called papers. So let's say I put it under projects. Notice these are the categories that we created earlier. And then just click on save and return to the course. At this point the paper has been configured and it is available for students to let's turn editing back on here it's available for students to post and respond to it I would recommend that uh, you probably have them separated the papers from um, so you could indent this twice and further here or you could have a set or a section here or a label called assignments and then up here lectures so to do that just in case you wanted to you click on add an activity you choose a label and then we could have here something like this it's called a label and then by the way you can drag this up and down within the course if you wanted to you can also duplicate this so that you can make one for lectures and then bring this up here and then change it to the word lecture resources or something like that so you have lectures and you have assignments We'll bring that down one and this is how it will look if we turn editing off this is how it will look so far for September 3rd we have a summary then we have the lecture resources then we have the assignments here in the bottom so that should cover how to create a regular assignment